I definitely do go into a bit of a meditative state when I'm drawing. When you get into that moment and you know an area of the drawing is clicking, you understand the form or the space or the light and you know you can nail it. That kind of moment of pleasure within the drudgery is enough to kind of keep moving forward with these obsessive practices that I seem to be involved in. There's a lot of commonality between the two primary facets of my work. One would be drawing on paper, and one would be the wall drawings. I source from photography, film, and also uh, imagery that I put together myself, build digital collages that the drawings are based on. And so there's many areas of method that are really similar between the two practices. I'm taking a JPEG image that I've prepared ahead of time. We're putting that into the projector and giving ourselves a good sense of things on the wall. I'm using traditions of drawing that are hundreds of years old, and those are simple. Cross-hatching, building mass and volume, all these kinds of things. But I, I'm trying to find a way to kind of partner the old and the new through using newer technology to help inform the work and also these older methods. We had a loose sense of stencil or positioning of objects, where the figure was, where an arm might be, some basic things like that, but we're working after the projection from printouts and we're working back and forth from the printout to the wall. We are spending quite a bit of time trying to figure out greater detail about position. So does this flower petal move outwards or does it shrink down? What is the particular value or texture that we see? And when I say we, I mean the team of five of us, myself included, that's working on this wall. It's really fantastic to be here with other people making something and having the process of making the drawing be a social one. Some of the monochromatic qualities in the work come from a connection to early film and early photography. So as an example, I've often sampled from early photography of the West. So Carlton Watkins, Edward Muybridge, people like that. The children's book that uh, my wife and I have done together is called The Whale, and it follows two kids as they search for what may or may not be a hoax, a huge spotted whale that has perhaps been seen, perhaps not, and they're kind of out to either prove or disprove this theory or sighting. We also were thinking about Jacques Cousteau, Robinson Crusoe, and a lot of books where people are stuck on islands and lost at sea and things like that that are important to the narrative of the children's book. And a lot of those include these really beautiful, highly detailed black and white illustrations. Part of it is that people also still associate film with black and white. As, as many years as we've been looking at and consuming and making films in color, people think about film and one of the first things they think about is that it comes from the black and white. You know, that's its origin. Most viewers would come up to this kind of drawing and say, like, I can only do stick figures, I can't draw, I've never been able to draw, and I think that's total BS, and everyone can draw. A lot of it really is just about practice. And then there's just, you know, do you have the enthusiasm to take it farther? What's more important to me is maybe the, the democracy of drawing, the way in which drawing is utilized and practiced by people whether they know it or not. We use drawing as a simple form of translation when language doesn't suffice. We use it in forms of doodling and note-taking to code our and record our responses to the world. 
And then we also use it in practices that are more formal or recognized, like artistic practices. And to me, that breadth of it, that usability and functionality of it across all those different disciplines and approaches is what makes it so rich. My hope with Plethora is that it starts to suggest issues related to the accessibility of food. On one end of the scale, the relative abundance of food, and on the other end, the total lack of it, period. There are very few people that have total access to what they want. And so my hope is with the, with the drawing is that it starts to suggest that contrast between those that have many and those that have very little or none. Part of the joy of making the drawing is that there's a vulnerability, of making any work, is that there's a vulnerability with content. You go out and you plan and hope for the content to deal with one kind of thing, and it's common for it to be stretched, taken away from you, transitioned, mutated by the process itself, or what you encounter while you're making it into something totally different. And I'm happy about that. I, I eagerly anticipate that, but it is a moment of vulnerability, because you don't you don't really know how, what the effect of the drawing will be in the end. So I hope it talks about issues of food and privilege and things like that, but we'll find out. The viewers will decide.